everyone and welcome to the new edition of the YumoNet Paper of the Month video review. We are Mikhail Protopopov and uh, my colleague Polona Zhigon from the YumoNet Working Group and we are uh, really happy to welcome you here. Hi, today we are going to discuss a paper recently published in Rheumatology. Let us introduce the first author of the paper, Dr. Ethan Baylet from University of Grenoble, France. Hi, Polna. Hi, Michael. Thank you for your interest in our paper. I am Atan Baye. I am a rheumatologist, professor of rheumatology in Grenoble Alpes University, France. And I, I am head of a basic research lab called GREPI. Uh, which is involved in basic research in chronic inflammatory diseases. Thank you very much, Athan. Uh, we firstly congratulate you with your paper being selected for the paper as the paper of the month. And can you please also introduce the title of the paper? The title of the paper we recently published is calprotectin discriminates septic arthritis from pseudogout and rheumatoid arthritis. Can you tell us, yes, why is it important to discriminate between septic arthritis and other inflammatory arthritis in clinical practice? Why conventional techniques are not valid? Sure, yes. Um, the reason why why we were interested in uh, discriminating uh, crystal-induced uh, um, arthritis and septic arthritis is because uh, most of these uh, single joint arthritis are uh, required to be hospitalized, and uh, therefore it's uh, have a quite huge uh, et economical burden, at least in France. So most of these uh, monoarthritis are crystal induced, but uh, the threatening of uh, septic arthritis is always in mind in rheumatologists. Uh, so we are inter in interested in uh, a very quick uh, answer to the question, is this monoarthritis septic or uh, not septic? If it's not septic, it can be discharged from the hospital. And if it's septic, obviously it has to be, uh, the patient has to be hospitalized. Yeah, thank you for this clear answer. Uh, can you please explain the statistical approach that you used in your uh, paper? How did you differentiate between the, uh, how many groups did you have and what statistical tests did you use to, to find these differences in the calprotectin level between the groups? Uh, this work was a monocentric prospective trial and we uh, prospectively uh, analyzed uh, Senegal fluid from patients with um, monoarthritis. Uh, we achieved to uh, discriminate three groups, patients with septic arthritis defined by first an inflammatory uh, synovial fluid and a uh, positive uh, microbial culture. Second, pseudo gout, which was defined as an inflammatory uh, synovial fluid and crystal to microscopy. And the last group was rheumatoid arthritis, uh, defined by the um, pathologist opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, since I come from a laboratory, I'm interested uh, also about the laboratory assay. Is it easy to implement in hospitals? Yes, it can. Uh, this uh, biomarker is currently uh, available uh, to, uh, for the management of IBD uh, patients. So I think this uh, test can be easily implemented in clinical practice. Uh, apart with the calprotectin, also in this paper, you have explored the performance of the alpha deficits to discriminate the uh, uh, septic and pseudic arthritis from the rheumatoid arthritis and actually you didn't find any significant difference. So can you, uh, do you have an explanation for this? Obviously you didn't have uh, the samples for all the patients. So maybe that this lack of statistical significance was 
mainly due to the low sample size. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, we were missing uh, a few samples for the alpha defamacin analysis. So this um, difference in uh, sensitivity and specificity between defenses and calprotecty could be explained by this lack of power. Thank you. Uh, so you studied calprotectins in synovial fluid. fluid. Uh, is there a possibility to test um, calproteins also in um, blood samples? Yes, we have tested the efficiency of calprotectin to discriminate uh, progressors and non-progressors in early rheumatoid arthritis and early uh, axial spondyloarthritis. But the efficiency of calprotectin to discriminate uh, progressors and non-progressors well, was not as good as uh, usually uh, tested markers such as uh, uh, erosion or such as uh, inflammatory markers. Uh, you report 150 milligram uh, per liter uh, as the main uh, as the main threshold that you have chosen. Uh, to report the sensitivity and specificity and other diagnostic uh, performance parameters of calprotectin. Why did you choose this threshold? Because you also have in your paper data of the 50 milligram uh, per liter, which has shown, if taking as the threshold, much higher sensitivity. So yeah, uh, can you please give us an overview of that? Yes, we, we first... Um determine a threshold through the classical Yunden approach, uh, which uh, combined the best sensitivity and specificity. Uh, we achieved the threshold of uh, 150 milligrams, but which is uh, quite interesting because it was found at the same threshold to be the optimal uh, threshold for uh, detection of infection of a uh, prosthetic joint. But uh, in septic arthritis, we want to avoid um, negative, uh, false negative uh, patients. So we try to optimize the threshold in order to uh, avoid uh, this kind of um, false negative patients. In your opinion, uh, what would be the next steps to allow the translation of the results you got to the pr uh, routine clinical practice? Um, first, we need to um, determine whether at the threshold that we have analyzed in this paper, we have the same uh, sensitivity and specificity as we did not have any um, uh, replication cohort to uh, be sure of this point. And the next step would be to uh, analyze that in um, to analyze this uh, in a tr prospective trial in order to uh, know whether patient with negative uh, calprotectin can be discharged and then test the medical economic uh, value of this uh, biomarker. Can you please give a take home message? Uh, so a short plain summary of your paper to our readers. What is the main message of the paper? Um, this uh, paper emphasized the, the possibility to um, analyze surrogate marker to uh, discharge patients which are often um, hospitalized for a few days waiting for the microbiological code test to be uh, achieved. Um, and the other uh, take-home message I would like to emphasize is Sometimes we are uh, focusing in chronic, chromatic, chrom, chronic. Sometimes we uh, are focused on T cells uh, biomarker and cytokines. Uh, but uh, neutrophil related biomarker can be really interesting in uh, chronic inflammatory disease and also in septic arthritis. Wonderful. So, Thank you very sense. much for this update. Thank you. Thank you very much for the participation. In yeah, our... we are now at the end of this interview.
I would again congratulate the authors for winning the paper of the month. And thank you very much for presenting your results in this uh, interview and to collaborate with MUNET. Thank you, and thank you, Igona and Mikhail, for uh, this interview. Thank you. Thank you.